Are you guilty of using return to home on every one of your drone flights? If so, you need to watch this video. Hi, I'm Ashton Droning On, and if you enjoy this content, then smash that subscribe button below. I need to talk to you about these drone operators that use return to home routinely on almost every single flight that they take. Now let's first of all talk about why return to home is actually there. Almost every drone on the market today, regardless of who manufactures it, has a feature called return to home. And effectively, this is a safety feature which is there to automatically bring the drone back to the point at which it took off from. Now you might think, well, what a great feature. And yes, it absolutely is. It's there as a safety barrier for people who either can't fly their drone back manually because they don't have the skills or competence. And it's also, of course, there for if the operator loses connection or connectivity with their drone, the drone will automatically pilot itself back. But only the latter is a use case that's valid. Any other reason for using return to home is simply unjustified. We all fly drones to be better, right? We fly them because we want to be better drone operators and be able to capture those stunning shots that we want to capture by flying that drone manually. But when we use an automated feature like return to home to return the drone to us, we lose the ability to evolve our own competency. Regardless of where the drone is, it might be out of line of sight, hopefully not, but it's flying itself back and you're losing the ability to evolve your navigation skills and also your orientation. In other words, knowing where the drone is in the sky and knowing which way to fly to bring it back to you. Naturally, the only thing that this creates is laziness and also no ability to actually improve your own skills for flying. Picture this, you get into your car every morning and press a button and the car takes you to work. When you're ready to go home, you press another button and it takes you home. You're not gonna become a better driver, are you, if the car is driving itself, and the exact same applies to drones as well. The more that you operate that drone and fly it manually, the better the operator you become, certainly not only in terms of flying skills, but also in terms of navigating it to where you want it to be. Now, whilst Return to Home is very, very capable in terms of getting the drone back to you on most occasions, not every drone has obstacle avoidance. And without obstacle avoidance, imagine trying to wander home from the pub blindfolded. You're probably gonna bounce off a few objects, right? Well, drones don't bounce off things particularly well, and generally they will just crash and you'll never see them again. That certainly applies to drones like the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2, which don't have any obstacle avoidance at all. Certainly none that's useful forward, sideways, and rear facing. The Mini only actually has underside obstacle avoidance, which is a bit pointless when the drone's in forward flight. And so if you do trigger return to home on drones like the Mini and the Mini 2, if any obstacle is in the way, that drone is going to hit it. But even for drones that have obstacle avoidance, there's absolutely no guarantee that it's gonna get back to you safely. Things like trees and branches, which the drone often can't actually see, including anything with a reflective surface, which it may not deem to actually be an object, it will just fly straight into it. Not only then is of course there a risk of you losing your drone, but also the drone hitting a building and falling to the ground and potentially hitting somebody or someone else's property. The next one ties into the previous point in terms of the return to home altitude. Now before you fly, it's essential that you set the return to home altitude correctly. And the reality is that most incompetent pilots forget to even look at that setting once, let alone to review it before every single flight. Return to home is primarily there for if you lose signal or connectivity or complete orientation in regards to where your drone is. And when you hit that button or when return to home triggers, it's essential that it can ascend to a safe altitude before it starts moving into forward flight. Before every single flight, go into the app and set this setting that you see here. That's the return to home altitude and set it to above the highest peak or object wherever you might be flying. So for example, if there's a building that you know nearby that's 100 meters from the ground level, set your return to home to 110 meters. That way you know that when return to home invokes, it will fly over that building. Precision landing, okay, it's a nice feature, but if you can't even fly a drone back to yourself and land it in the position that you want it to land in, 
then you really shouldn't be flying drones at all. I keep seeing these videos on YouTube testing precision landing and people getting so excited about it, but ultimately this is the ultimate height of laziness in regards to drone operation. If you can't fly a drone back to where you took off from and land it where you want to land it, just sell them all now and do us all a favor, please. This one really ties into how we open this video in that return to home is there for emergencies. It's not there to be used routinely. It's not there to be used on every single flight. All of our cars have systems called ABS braking. Our cars have airbags, but we don't use the ABS every time we brake, do we? We don't deploy the airbag every time we slow down. The same applies to return to home. It's a nice feature that's there to be used if you need it in an emergency but it should not be used routinely because it just breeds laziness and incompetency. The real valid times to use return to home is if you've truly and genuinely lost orientation or if you have a hardware failure or you completely lose connection. For example, if the screen on your phone goes blank or your phone actually runs out of battery and you're left with just the controller, hit that button. Of course, if your controller and your phone die or they lose connection with the drone, return to home will just invoke all by itself. And isn't that brilliant? That's precisely why it's there. And finally, we buy drones because we love flying them, don't we? We don't buy drones for them to fly themselves. If we did, we'd all buy Skydios and we probably wouldn't all be very happy. We buy drones for the thrill of taking off and manually piloting that drone and capturing stunning video, stunning photos. And when we're ready to land, we navigate that drone back to ourselves by ourselves and we land it where we want to land it. As soon as you let the drone do all the flying, you're not really flying that drone. You're not a drone operator. You're just somebody pressing a button. That's pretty boring, isn't it? We do this because we've got passion for drones. So don't be lazy. Don't press that return to home button. Evolve your skills, evolve your piloting and become a truly competent drone operator. So there you go. That's our video on why you shouldn't be using return to home routinely. Comment below with your thoughts on this. Have you used return to home routinely or have you used it in an emergency and how did it go for you? Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you use return to home on every single flight. And of course, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching.